Before the break, we were talking about all the different ways elderly people might be able to improve their health and keep themselves healthy as they get older. One of the things I have to mention now is the bad things that can happen when you take medications, see doctors, have procedures done. Some of these people think that this might be the leading cause of death in America for the aged. What's your perspective on that? Can, can we be over-medicated? Can we be taking too many medicines? Can we have too many things done, procedures done to the elderly? Is that possible? Well, let, let me just say to start with that medicine is practiced by human beings, and I don't know any human being that's perfect. Uh, so um, to say that mistakes never occur or that things can't happen, there, there's no doubt that it can. Yeah. Um, there are things that you can do to help protect yourself against that. Right. Um, a lot of it is communicating well with your doctor and having a doctor that communicates well with you. And mm -hmm. if you're not satisfied with whether your doctor is taking interest in you or listening to you, you need to be looking for a different doctor because you need to have that degree of comfort right. with your doctors. Um, no doubt you can over-medicate. Um, I think it's one of the biggest problems that we are facing in this country and there are several reasons for it. Um, as doctors, we want to do everything we can to make you feel better. Right. And sometimes that leads us to adding medications that maybe if we thought about it a little bit more, isn't the best choice. It's tough sometimes to uh, have a patient come in and talk to them and say, I'm sorry you're hurting like that, there's really not a whole lot we can do. And so rather than do that, we try whatever we can, even if it's medications, often to, to relieve the, the problem. Another thing that goes into this, though, is that more and more Americans are getting interested in herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. And they don't often think to tell their doctor that they're on these herbs when the doctor prescribes another medicine. And if the doctor doesn't ask, or they can't remember the name of the herb, or a lot of times people think, well, they're herbs, they're safe. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not like those dangerous medications I'm right. using. And the result is that combining some of these herbs and pharmaceuticals can actually be very dangerous. You know, one of the things I try to stress in some of my elderly patients is drinking water. Absolutely. As you get older, your thirst goes down, you get dehydrated, then you take a lot of medications, they become a lot more potent. The other thing about the elderly is that uh, most of the research done on most of these medications are done on people that are between the age of 20 and 60. And now that our population is aging more, what we do know is that we don't clear these medicines as easily right. as somebody between the age of 20 to 60, even if we are well hydrated. So we have to be careful about dosing and combinations, and certainly they last longer, and thus side effects can be higher in the elderly. Yeah, and wouldn't you say through your years that as you've seen the population aging, the aging population really needs to stay pretty doggone close to their doctors. Absolutely. You know, you just can't go once a year maybe. Sometimes if you're a lot of medicines, lots of things are changing. You've got to stay very, and you need someone that knows you, exactly. your history, and your medicine very well. Exactly. Well, let's move on to the next question. This is sort of has to do with medications as well. It says, I'm 92 years old and sleep four hours a night. Would a sleeping pill hurt me? And he says, I still think very clearly. So, nine, you know, aged, you know, once a sleep, is four, four hours enough? Well, um, it's not uncommon for elderly to have problems with sleeping. Four hours is not enough, however and certainly there are things that he might want to do to help him sleep. You have to really be careful, again, with sleeping pills in the elderly. Um, again, someone that is above 90, they are gonna have a hard time clearing that medication mm -hmm. out of their system, just like we were talking about right. other medications. And so um, he may be thinking clearly without medication on board, but with sleeping medication, he may actually become confused during the night, get up, be subject to falling. Yeah, there's your hip. Right. And so it's a lot more dangerous in somebody who is that age to take a sleeping pill. So everything really, you have to really individualize the risk and benefits of the pill versus the risk of sleeping a little bit better. It varies from Correct. person to person. And there's other things you can do. Sometimes if you change your habits at night a little bit so that you're, you help yourself get drowsy, um, you know, don't be around a lot of noise, um, maybe take a warm bath in the evening to help calm yourself down. 
uh, other behavioral things that might help. But certainly what he needs to do is talk to his doctor right. about the safety of him taking a sleeping pill. You know, I had one gentleman that fell in this category. He was elderly. He just quit drinking at night, and that kept him from having to get up. You know, sure. having to go to the bathroom was what was keeping him up. Well, you know, being medications, being careful, communicating with your doctor, very, very important. Very important. Yes. You know, we're going to go to a break now, but after, when we get back from our break, Ken, we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease, something that's very common, how to help our memory. Please stay tuned, and we will be right back after this short break. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Heart of Health. If you would like to send us one of your questions, our website is heartwiseministries.org. We're going to now answer a question about memory. Memory in the aged is a very big deal. Um, Alzheimer's disease, different types of dementias, it's a, it's a problem. One of our questions comes in and says, as I get older, my memory's not doing as well. Any suggestions for improving my memory? You know, mine gets bad now, and I know I don't have Alzheimer's, but how can an older person improve their memory? Well, that's a tough question. Yeah. I, I can tell you that the fact that he's worrying good. about his memory is a good thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's kind of an unwritten rule. If you're worried about your loss of memory, you probably don't have dementia. That's right. Um, when you don't know that you've <laughs> lost your memory, you're in trouble. Um, you know, I come back again to what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. the, probably the most important thing is exercise. Um, the more he stays active, the better chance he has of keeping a sharp mind. Okay. And so getting that exercise every day is really an important factor in helping him. Again, sleep is a real issue in the elderly, and if they're not getting enough rest, they're going to have a hard time with memory. Um, you know, getting old is not for the faint of heart, we right. say, and the stresses of getting old and facing those, a lot of times that stress will make it, you, you think you're forgetting your, you're, you're losing your memory, but in reality it's the stress that's making it hard for you to cope mm -hmm. and think right. clearly through things. So you have to look at your environment and, and what you're dealing with. So exercise, keeping your stressors low, anything else? That, well, how do you feel about some of these medications for memory? There's many out there, and I'm sure you've prescribed them before. Yeah, I mean, most of the medications that are out there are really, that are supposed to actually help, are really the ones that are more specifically for Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's right. right. Uh, the cholinesterase inhibitors like Namenda or mm -hmm. Air or, um, or those, Exelon, et cetera. Right. And I have mixed feelings about them. There is no doubt that for patients that truly are showing the signs of dementia coming in, setting in, it does help delay the progress. But they're really the best thing we have right. on the market, but how good is that? I mean, we actually measure the success of those pills in how many months we can keep somebody out of an institution. Right. You know, I think your point early on is a lot of these chronic health problems that we see in the elderly, we have to deal with them in our younger lives. Correct. So if I want to have successful memory when I'm older, I have to practice good health habits, exercise, do all these things when I'm younger right. to keep that brain from deteriorating. Right. Well, that's interesting. Um, here's, here's a very good question here I want to talk about for a little bit. Um, and it's a tough one. It says, my wife and I are having a hard time taking care of ourselves. So they realize it. We think we need extra help. And their basic question, Ken, is, you know, as we get older, we can't take care of ourselves. We realize it, but we still want our independence. You know, we might have health problems. We might have other issues taking care of things. How do we know when it's time for us prideful people to get extra help or, or look for an assisted living or, or do something different? What are some yeah. suggestions you might have? Tough, tough question. Um, the hardest thing, I think, is actually coming to that point of wanting to get that help and, and understanding that you need it. 
Um, there's the assisted living end of it, and there's nursing home end and of it. And what's the difference? Well, um, most of the way people get into nursing homes is really from the hospital. They've had a severe illness. The doctor says at the end of that stay, you know what, you need more help than what you can get at home. You're still too sick to go home. We're going to put you in a nursing home for a while to get some rehab and strengthen you up. And that's how people most often hit the nursing home. Assisted living, people usually come there more healthy, still functioning. Um, I think to make the decision of how to get there, you really need your family's help okay. unless you're sure between you and your spouse or you by yourself that you're ready to go and you really need to talk to your doctor. Right. There is still a big debate out there about assisted living facilities. Are they a social environment or they are, are they a medical care facility? And in reality, there's a lot, uh, uh, a big range to what you get in assisted living. So part of it is talking to your doctor to figure out how much help you need and then going to the assisted living to find out whether they can meet your needs at that facility. Right. You know, a lot of people as we age are going to have this very important question to answer. So, you know, to summary, it seems like some of the things that we want to really hit on that you've touched on is as exercise is very important for the aging. Absolutely. Having good communication with your doctors. Yes. And your families and realizing that, you know, the communication, looking at the big picture is very important as well. Yes. Now, I know that there's many ways that we can pick a place to live and all sorts of things we can look at. This is going to be something we have to talk about at another time because we are short of time on Heart of Health today. But I want to thank you for being with us, Ken. We've, we've enjoyed your time and I think our audience has picked up some good insights. If you've been interested in this topic today, please go on to our website, heartwiseministries.org. We'd love to have you ask a question or give us a comment. Thank you for joining us today on Heart of Health.